Hello and good day to you, South Street Baptist Church. It's such a privilege and honor for me to be with you once again. My name is Tabitha and I am from Miami, Florida, and I am a leader here in King Jesus Church. And so I, my greetings to you and thank you so much again for allowing me to come and to bring uh, this word to you. It, it is a privilege and an honor for me. And I would also like to honor my spiritual uh, father and mother, Apostle Guillermo Maldonado and Prophet Anna Maldonado. They have both been a blessing to my life. They've both uh, spoken into my life and they have loved me unconditionally. So I honor them. They believe in me. I also want to thank Teacher John and Teacher Letty. They have also believed in me, and they have, uh, they're my authority, one, uh, one of my authorities, and they have opened up this door for me and allowed me to come and to be able to bring you the Word of God. So I honor them, and I'm so thankful. And I also want to honor Pastor Gideon and Pastor Irene as well for giving me this opportunity. Uh, as a pastor, I know you have to be very careful who you allow to speak to your, to your people. And so I consider it a great honor that they have opened up the door for me and given me this, uh, this opportunity. So let's, before we begin, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your mercy that is new every morning. Lord, we would not be here if it was not for you. And for that, we're so grateful. We're thankful for your presence in our life. We're thankful for your love. We are thankful for your power. We are thankful for the divine in our life, for the supernatural in our life. We thank you that you are beginning to transform us and change us in ways that we could never have imagined. Lord, we thank you for deliverance in our life. We thank you that you are healing us. You are restoring us. You are bringing us back to that place where we should be. Father, that place of wholeness, that place of being complete in you. And Father, for that we honor you and we worship you. We thank you for this day because it is a day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we honor you today and we enthrone you in our life. We enthrone you in our homes. Wherever we're at, we enthrone you, Jesus. And we say, Lord, we have made you the Lord of our life. So come and sit on the throne in this morning take over, have your way, do your will in our life. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, we glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, thank you so much. And Pastor Gideon uh, told me to bring the word, whatever it is that I felt from the Lord, to speak with you. And that is easy for a pastor to say, uh, but it's fearful for somebody that receives those, those words because you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what they need. And so uh, you really have to depend on the Lord and on the Holy Spirit to give you the right now word. So I know that whatever um, uh, I'm going to release today, I know that you guys are going to receive it. I pray that you open up your heart and your mind. And uh, there's always something new to the Word of God. We might have heard, uh, you might have heard what you're going to hear today a thousand times, but I challenge you to receive it with uh, fresh eyes and with fresh revelation and, and just uh, ask the Lord, what is it in my life that I need to work on or need to change or, or what do I, where do I need to grow? Where are you calling me to go to the next level so that I can uh, step further into my calling and purpose? So again, so as I was praying, um, one day the Lord just said to me, remind them who they are. So we all know that we're children of God, we're sons of God, but um, a lot of times uh, the world uh, tries to tell us different things. And I don't know if you've looked around you and noticed, but right now in the world there is such a huge lack of identity, there's a lack of fatherhood, and as children... Uh, children, we receive our identity from our father. So uh, even as natural children. So if you are brought up without a father, there's going to be a lack of identity. Why? Because the father is the head. He's the, the head of the house. He's the 
the priest and the father is the one that imparts the, that identity. The mother is the one that nurtures and cares for and imparts the love and, and, and the emotional aspect and the, the affirmation. But a father is the one that brings identity. And we know that because when you're born, you receive the last name of your father. You know, so my last name is Tice. I didn't receive my mother's last name or the identity of my mother, which her last name was Palmer before she got married to my dad. I received the last name of my father. So I am identified by him. So if you see me, that's why Jesus said in the word of God, if you've seen me, you've seen the father because we are identified by the name of our father. So uh, for somebody to grow up without a father, they, they have a lack of identity. They don't know who they are or where they're supposed to be, you know. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of gender issues in the world today. People, they don't know uh, if they're male, if they're female. They don't know what they are anymore. And so that also shows a lack of identity uh, in the world. And also uh, divorce is an all-time high. People are lacking identity, and, and they bring that into their marriage, you know, and even within the, the body of Christ. Um, another reason uh, or way that we can see is um, that there's a lack of identity is that there are a lot of kids that are left to themselves. I don't know how you call them there, but here in the U.S., we call them latchkey kids. In other words, the parents are working, and they have a key, and they get out of school, and they go home, and they're home alone for a few hours, and they're left to themselves. And instead of having somebody there to lead them and to guide them, most of the time they're alone, and they're trying to figure out things by themselves or... Um, Maybe they find a friend or they befriend somebody that might not be a good influence for them or on them. And so they start to do things that they're not supposed to do. And so they end up in a lot of trouble. And um, as a believer... We need to know what our identity is, especially now in the end times. You know, and I was speaking with somebody recently. This doesn't really have anything to do with the message, but I thought it's a great point because we hear a lot about the end times and, and we talk about, a lot about the end times. And the end times was from the, the death and resurrection of Jesus until the advent of Christ or until the second coming of Christ when we are raptured to be with him. So even Apostle Paul was uh, in the end times and that is why uh, he uh, and the apostle Peter and in the Bible they could talk about the end times why because they were living in the end times so we are in the end times and we know that it's get, the return of Christ is getting closer just by uh, looking outside and seeing the things going on around us and by by hearing things you know there's uh, so much uh tension and, and um, political tension and racial tension and just different things going on in the world. So we know that Christ is soon returning. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to having a, a, a new body <laughs> and being on a new earth. Amen. So uh, your identity in Christ, uh, your identity will never be complete until you see yourself through the eyes of God. So as a believer, it's so important that you see yourself as God sees you. So I'm not sure how it is that you see yourself when you look in the mirror. What do you see? Um, for me, uh, uh, I've been a Christian my whole life. And before I came to King Jesus, I didn't really know much about deliverance or inner healing. And I personally had a lot of rejection. I was rejected by my um, mother in a, a way that really affected me. Not, um, But my parents are still together. I grew up with my parents. But when I was a little, you know, somewhere between 7 and 10, I remember that I went to sit on my mom's lap. Uh, you know, it had been after a, a hard days of work and she was tired and she pushed me off her lap and she said, go, go outside and play. I don't want you on my lap right now. And that, uh, that right there um, brought a lot of rejection into my life. And it uh, created a rift. My mother didn't know or realize, you know, she was just a tired mom trying to raise five kids and she was busy. <laughs> and so that brought um, a separation in our relationship. 
And so I, I grew up, you know, um, also my dad would uh, always be working because my mom didn't work. She was a stay at home mom. And so my father would be working. He would leave early in the morning. We wouldn't see him when he left. And then he would come home late at night. We'd have dinner and then he would um, be tired from his day. So he would, you know, want to go and rest. And so there wasn't always a lot of time for him to spend with his five kids. And when he did, he, he loved us. And you know, as an, as an adult, you look back and you see all of those things and you see um, everything that he did for you, but there was still some lack of identity, there was rejection. And so I had to learn to see myself through the eyes of God. And God has delivered me from that rejection. If he hadn't, trust me, I would not be standing before you today. And I learned to, to see um, who I am in Christ. And that is what my prayer is for you today, that you will truly see who you are in Christ and that you will walk in the fullness of what God has for you. Uh, and nowadays, a lot of times we're defined by magazines, by what we see in a magazine. You know, girls flip through magazines and they see these skinny, pretty girls that have makeup, uh, have makeup and they're, um, you know, uh, have all of their faults and pimples and everything, freckles all um, taken out. And so they look flawless. And in reality, that's not what they look like at all. And so um, uh, a lot of times we're defined by the world. So my question is, what are you defined by? Are you defined by the world, um, by TV, that, by magazines? Uh, a lot of times the world says that as a Christian, we're radical, we're Jesus freaks, we're crazy. And so that kind of tends to make us step back. We're afraid to speak out, to, uh, to evangelize and, and to speak of our faith because we're afraid of what people are going to say. And so what has happened is that we have allowed what the world said or the identity of the world to creep in and to, um, twist the identity that Christ has given us. A lot of times um, people are defined by their job, by their position uh, and, and their work, by their job title. Maybe you have a company and so, or your own, uh, your own business and you're defined, you have defined yourself or allowed yourself to be defined by that particular business or by your job. Some people are defined by their bank account or the amount of money that they have or by the amount of money they don't have, you know? And they say, well, I don't have a lot of money, then I'm poor. And so they begin to identify themselves as being poor. And so what that does is it opens up a door. Whatever you identify yourself is it opens up a door in your life to, uh, for the enemy to come in and to use those things against you. If you identify yourself uh, by something other than what the Word of God says, amen? Maybe you identify yourself by your relationships. Uh, maybe you, I, if you're married, you identify yourself. Your identity comes through your relationships, through your marriage, through your husband. Or if you're single, maybe you feel like you don't have an identity at all because you're not with anybody. Maybe you, identi you identify yourself by what your parents have said you were. You know, or a leader had, has said about you that was negative. Maybe you've been told that you were worthless, that you're no good, that you're going to amount to nothing. And that is how you see yourself when you look in the mirror. So my, uh, again, my question to you is, how do you identify yourself? In other words, when you look in the mirror, what do you see? Um, again, I had a lot of rejection. And when I looked in the mirror, I hated myself. I hated everything about myself growing up. I didn't like the way that I looked. I didn't like my hair. I didn't think my eyes were pretty enough. Uh, I, you know, I thought I was fat. I wasn't skinny enough. And nobody would love me. And I had so much uh, rejection and such a lack of identity. And, and Christ came in and through the word of God, uh, amen, he began to, to change my mentality and my personal perspective of how I saw myself. So how is it that you see yourself? Because today God wants to train, to change and to transform the way that you see yourself. So you are not who people say you are. You are not your past mistakes. You are not your past. Uh, you are not uh, your parents. You are not what your parents have said you are. So uh, I don't know who people have said you were. You're not hard. You're not cruel. You're not mean. 
And maybe people that have that never said anything bad about you, maybe everything that they say is good. Um, but even then, you are not those things because uh, you are only who God says you are. And maybe those things reflect the good, obviously will reflect the God, God in you, which is great. So don't stop being good. Don't stop doing good things. But my point is that we are not who people say we are. You are more than that. God has said so much more about you than what people could ever imagine or think. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 56, verse 5, it says, Even unto them I will give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. So God is saying to you that he is going to give you an everlasting name. You know, I don't know if you even like your name. There's some people that are like, man, I don't like my name. I don't, I want to change my name. But God in the spirit is giving you an everlasting name man and I think I don't know about you but that just stirs something in me it's not even just a son or a daughter but it's a name that is going to live forever uh, who is it that the bible says you are that's my question. Say with me, who does the Bible say that I am? And today I'm going to go over what it is that the word of God says that you are just so that it can get ingrained in your, into your brain, into your heart, into your spirit, so that you can walk in the fullness of who you are and you can walk in the fullness of everything that Jesus has done for you on the cross. So who is it or what is it? What does the Bible say that you are? Number one, the Bible says that you are in the world, but we are not of the world. Amen? So we, we are not of this world. The Bible says that Jesus knew us before the foundation of the earth. So in other words, we were in heaven prior to being born on this earth, and God knew us. He knows us. He knows who we are. He knows our end from our beginning. So we are in the world, but we are not called to be a part of it. And what does that mean? That means that we're not called to do the things that the world does. We're called to be separated. We're called to be separated from the world, separated from sin. The world looks at it and they say, do what you can, get what you can, live life to the fullest, follow your heart. But all of those things, in reality, the word of God says is, is garbage because our heart is deceitfully wicked. You know, and it's not about getting what you can. It's about giving. The word of God says it's better to give than to receive. So in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 and 16, it says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. What is it today that has a hold on you from the world? What is it that you are in love with from the world? Is it money? Is it fame? Is it riches? Is it relationship? Is it any of those things that we said that def, uh, define, uh, that the world defines us by? Is it your looks, uh, how pretty you are, how ugly you think you are? Because in reality, you are not. You are beautiful. The Word of God says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen? So it says, if anyone loves the world, the love for the Father is not in them. So if you are in love with anything in the world, the love of God cannot be in you. That's kind of a scary thought. The love of God is not in you. And it doesn't mean that you can't enjoy the, the benefits of life or the benefits of living in the world. It just means that you don't have a hold, that the world doesn't have a hold on you. And that you are... Um, you recognize that Jesus is your Lord and that at any moment he can come back and in the twinkling of an eye, we're going to be lifted up. Amen. It continues on to say in verse 16 that for everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life comes not from the father but from the world. So what is it that you have been lusting after? Well, have you seen what somebody else has and now you want it? Do you, do you have pride? It's, uh, 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 are you unwilling to repent for things that you need to repent for or to change your mind because you think that you don't need to change? Uh, uh, what, 
also with pride, you think everybody else has to change and you're the only one that is perfect. No, I'm not the one that has to fix my life. They're the one that has to change. You know, why should I change? They're the one that, that is uh, doing wrong. And we can never, we never admit our wrong and we never admit our fault. So uh, also in John chapter 15, verse 19, it says, if you belonged to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, and that is why the world hates you. Have you ever noticed that maybe when you go to work, there's those uh, few coworkers that you always clash with. They're just like, man, I just don't like you. Or um, there's just something about you never get along with them. And they always give you issues and problems. Well, the reason for that is because you as a believer have the kingdom of heaven on the inside of you. Amen. You have Jesus on the inside of you. And uh, because you are part of, of a different kingdom, you're not part of this world. You're part of the kingdom of heaven. And they're part of the kingdom of this world. Uh, and so there's a clash between kingdoms. And so that's why you, head butt, you butt heads with people. That's why there's people that are not going to like you. Even if you're nice, you could be the nicest person in the world. You know, you're always nice. You're helping them. You're doing things for them. And they still are always rude and mean or disrespectful well now you know the reason for that the reason is because there is a clash between two kingdoms the kingdom of light that is on the inside of you and the kingdom of darkness that wants to destroy you and you know what there can't be a commingling you're always going to be clashing against the kingdom of darkness the, uh, maybe uh, you know your testimony I would say let, allow the spirit of God on the inside of you to, to be a testimony and a light for that person to bring them into the kingdom of light. Speak to them about the love of God. You know, ask God for wisdom and discernment to be able to speak into their life. To say, hey, I don't know what's going on, but I've been praying for you. God has shown me that you're really struggling. You're going through this or whatever it is. And I've been praying for you. And I want you to know that God loves you. I bet that that person will begin to change the way that they treat you. Amen. Also in John chapter 17, verse 16, it says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of it. And that was Jesus speaking. So if we are, uh, we're as believers, we are not of this world. Even though we're in it, we're not from it. Amen. And I'm so thankful for that because I look around me and I see everything that's going on, especially here in the U.S. And I'm sure even there in the U.K., all the political garbage that's happening, uh, everything is always negative. And we're having our elections, our presidential elections soon. And so there's just a lot of garbage you see in the world, people speaking things and doing things that you're like, man, I... I don't know how much more of this I can take. You know, I'm so grateful that I am, might be in the world, but I am not of it. And that my identity does not come from what is happening around me. Amen. Uh, the second thing that the Bible says who we are is that we are called to be holy. Say with me, I am called to be holy. So in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, it says, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And that word holy means sacred. It means pure. It means morally blameless. So since we are called to be holy and we are not of this world, and we're not supposed to be like this world. As believers, we should, uh, we should be separated. We should be consecrated and dedicated for the Lord. In other words, our relationships don't look like the world's relationships. Uh, we're not, uh, as a believer, my personal, me personally as a believer, I would never, uh, and as a single woman, I would never go out or seek a relationship with a man that is a non-believer. And the reason for that is because the word of God says not to be unequally yoked. So as a woman, and if, if, for those of you that are watching that are single, you are called to be holy. You are called to walk in holiness and walk in purity. You are not called to have a relationship like those in the world. Sometimes as single people, we look around and we see people, you know, holding hands and, and they're hugging and they're kissing. And you're like, man, I want that. I, I feel alone. Well, guess what? God is with you. You might feel alone, but you are not alone. 
alone. Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So I challenge you to get into the word of God. I challenge you to deepen your relationship with God. And I challenge you to, to remember who it is that you are to, and to walk in holiness. You know what? Because God has more the uh, and your relationship is more than just what the world says it is. It's more than just sex. It's more than just feeling lonely. It's uh, and feeling like there's somebody with you. God has a kingdom relationship specific for you. If you go out into the world and you get a relationship with somebody that is in the world and a believer, I can guarantee you that person will pull you out of the church. They will pull you out of God's plan. They will pull you out of God's purpose for your life. And that is not what God's will is for you. God's will is for you to have a kingdom relationship that is holy, that is pure and acceptable before the Lord. And I want to let you know that God has not forgotten you. Sometimes you might feel like you've been forgotten and you're like, well, where is my husband or where is my wife? God wants you to know he hasn't forgotten about you. He has that person. And he said in the right moment, God, one thing I've learned about God is that he is never late, but he is always on time. And in this moment, while you are single, uh, God wants you to begin to, to, to work things out of your life. Maybe there's something in your life or in your attitude, in your character that God needs to change or transform. Because if and when that person came along... It wouldn't work out because, because of your attitude, because of bad character, or because something is not changed or mentality is not transformed in your life. You know, uh, so I challenge you to, again, begin, if you're not already, to get in the Word of God and see what the Word of God says about relationships, about marriage. And I know that you guys just recently had a deliverance retreat. Uh, uh, is to be delivered, allow God to deliver you from your past so that you don't have any baggage going into your relationship. Because what happens is a lot of times, people, even if you're married now, this is for you. Maybe you have baggage from past relationships that is affecting your marriage or your current relationship. And God wants you to be healed from that. He wants you to be set free. Amen. So we are called to be holy. We're called to walk in purity. And that includes sexual purity. It's not just purity in our mind or purity in our thoughts, but it's purity in our body and sexual purity to be morally blameless. Amen. We're also called to be perfect. In James chapter one, verse four, it says, let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect, lacking nothing. And that word perfect means mature. God wants to bring you to a place of maturity. He wants to bring you to a new level where you're mature in your emotions, mature in your thoughts, mature in the way that you act and in your character. Amen. And why is that? It's so that you're not going to be tossed back and forth like the waves of the sea or so that you won't be double minded. But he wants you to be stable in your all of your decision. Amen. Um, and it's so that you're set in your mind of what is right. When I was a teenager, I made a decision that I was not going to have sex outside of marriage. And it's, uh, it's something that I had to set in my mind. You know, there have been uh, men or guys that have come knocking on the door and they weren't believers. And it, I'm not going to say I wasn't tempted. Let's be real. Some of them were not bad looking. Uh, but I always remember, you know what? I, I made a covenant with God. I made a covenant with God to be holy, to walk in purity. And I belong to God. I don't belong to myself. And so I, I said in my heart and I said in my mind that I was not going to be like the world. Amen. And so that's the same thing you have to do. You have to set in your mind and set in your heart that you're not going to walk away from biblical principles or from the will of God. Another thing that we are, uh, that the Bible says we are, is that we are sons of God. You are a son or a daughter of God. Amen. In uh, John chapter 1, verse 12 and 13, it's, it says, and yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name. How many of you believe in his name, in the name of Jesus? I don't know about you, but I do. It says he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision. 
And there's some of you that um, maybe you were not wanted by your parents, but God wants you to know right now that your birth was not of human decision. It, you were born because God ordained it before the foundation of the world. You are one in a million, literally. When your parents uh, uh, became one and, and had a sex in their relationship, there was over a million sperm cells that were released. And you were the one that won. You are the one that was victorious. So you are literally one in a million. And there is a specific reason and why God ordains for you to be on this world, on this earth, alive today because he has someone or something that he needs you to do. He has somebody that he, uh, there is someone's life that you need to impact. There is something you need to do. And if you are still presently on this earth, there is more for you to do. God has a calling. He has a purpose. His plan is not ended. I want you to know that God has not forgotten about you maybe you feel like there there's nothing left to live for that your life is meaningless I'm here to tell you your life is not meaningless and that suicide is not an answer it is not a response to your problem uh, suicide is a permanent response to a temporary problem your issue in this moment is temporary and it's gonna pass why because God is beginning to intervene in your life he's beginning to intervene in your situation and he says you are my son, you are my daughter, you are my beloved in whom I am well pleased. I have not left you. I have not forsaken you. I'm still with you. My plan is still not ended. If you're still standing on this earth, it's because God's plan for your life is not completed. What God has for you is not completed. God still has something more for you, and he still has something more for you to do. So I want you to lift up your head, to stand up, put your head up high, square your shoulders, and come Continue to walk forward because the end is not yet to come. Your end is not here. God has so much for you, son. He says, you are my son, my daughter. You are my jewel, the apple of my eye. Amen. So you are not born of human decision or of a husband's will or of a wife's will or a man or a woman, but you were born of God. Say with that with me today. Repeat that. Say, I was born of God. You were born of God with purpose and destiny, and you are here so your destiny has not yet been fulfilled. I feel fire. I feel fire in my, in my stomach. I feel the presence of God. There are some of you that you have worried about your calling and you feel like there's nothing uh, there's nothing left for you to do. Maybe you're an older person. I feel like there's an older person and you feel like your life is ending and that there's uh, you're older so there's nothing left for you to do. And God says to you, there is so much more for you to give. Maybe your physical body doesn't allow you to do things, but you still have a mouth, you still have a voice, your brain is still functioning, and you can still pray, you can release the word of God on this earth, you can take the Bible and you can begin to declare it over your family, declare it over your friends, declare it into the atmosphere, you begin to change people's lives by releasing the word of God over them. You are, are still called, you are called to be an intercessor. You're called to pray the will of God here on the earth. So maybe if your physical body isn't allowing you to be at church or to serve or do whatever, or maybe you're stuck at home because of coronavirus and you feel like you can't do anything, I'm here to tell you today that you are wrong. <laughs> and I'm not saying that bad, but God says you have a, to be his voice. You can be his mouthpiece on the earth by by praying, by interceding for somebody else and declaring the word of God. Amen. So you are on this earth to be a son of God. Isn't that office? Uh -uh. Isn't that awesome? You are, you're, 
we're, we're sons and daughters. We were bought with a price. We were bought with the blood of Jesus. I don't belong to this earth. I don't uh, belong to my parents. Uh, if I love them, I honor them, but I belong to God. I was born of God. You were born of God. So whoever told you otherwise, they were a liar. And I ripped that lie out of your mind right now, and I replaced it with a new truth, the truth. Not just a fact, a fact can be changed, but I replace it with a truth that says you were born of God, amen? Another thing that the word of God says that you are is you are an overcomer and you are victorious. So I don't know what it is you're going through. You know, in, in this moment, we're all going through a lot. Maybe there's something financially or physically or emotionally. And a lot of people have been depressed in this time. But guess what? You are an overcomer and you are victorious. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55, it says, Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? And verse uh, 56 says, The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. And verse 57 says, But thanks be to God. Say with me, Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. We have victory. We are overcomers. I don't know about you, but I am not a statistic, and I am not a victim, but I am an overcomer. I am victorious in the name of Jesus. And there's, uh, as I was praying and, and studying, the Lord told me there are some of you that you are addicted to alcohol or drugs in the past, and you have lived with that, um, with calling yourself an addict. You know, uh, I, I know friends and people that were addicts, um, drug addicts, uh, they abused drugs, they abused alcohol. And, and one thing, if you've ever been to one of those step, uh, excuse me, 12 step programs, they tell you, you know, you go, hey, my name is, I'm an addict. Well, I'm here to tell you that that is the world's perspective of you. That is what the world says you are. But the word of God says that you are healed, that you are delivered, you are not an addict, but you are victorious and you are an overcomer. And you don't have to live in that name that the world calls you, but you can walk in a son or daughter in the name of son of God. You can walk in the name of being born of God. You can say, you know what? I've been healed from drugs. I've been healed from alcohol addiction. I'm healed. I'm set free. I, I'm not an addict. I am not. And you know, every time you say I'm an addict, you're speaking that over your life. Instead, you need to be speaking something different. You need to say, I am free because the blood of Jesus has set me free. I am delivered and healed because by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. He was crucified for my transgressions. He died for me so that I, don't, I can be free and I don't have to be chained to the name that the world says that I am. That word addict has become a chain in your life. It has changed you to your past. It has changed you to regret. It has changed you to that name. And God said, today I'm breaking that chain over your life. Today I am releasing you from that bondage. I am releasing you from that lie that the world say you are. I have made you an overcomer. I have given you power. I have given you authority. And I have set you free by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Wow. Give the Lord a hand. God is healing somebody. He's delivering somebody right there in your home. He's setting you free. He's setting you free. The fire of God. The fire of God is released over you right now to deliver you. He's healing your mind. Why? Because it was a mindset. And maybe you weren't addicted to drugs or alcohol, but there's something else in your past that keeps coming back. God is beginning to remove that from your not mind. He's saying, I'm setting you free. I have set you free. He's removing it. The fire of God. The fire of God is removing that from you now. No longer will you be called that. The same way he changed the name of Jacob to Israel. God says, I am changing your name. You are no longer addict, but you are son. No longer are you your past, but you are my daughter. No longer are you what people said you are, but you are my heir to the kingdom. Amen. 
Thank you, Jesus. You are accepted in the beloved. That's something else that the Bible says that you are. Jesus said in, uh, in, uh, in Acts chapter 15, verse 8, it says, God knows the heart, shows that he is accepted by them, given the Holy Spirit to them, who knows the heart, so that he accepted them. God accepted you. You are accepted. You might not be accepted by the world, but guess what? You're accepted by God. In Romans 15, 7, it says, accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. You are accepted today. What else are you? You are a kingdom citizen. You are somebody that has been given delegated authority. So whatever it is that people have spoken against you or said that you were, cast it out. Amen. You have been given delegated authority. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 8, it says, So even if I boast somewhat freely about the authority the Lord gave us, for building you up rather than tearing you down, I will not be ashamed of it. So God has given you authority not to tear down, but to build up. Amen. Also, Luke chapter 10, verse 19, it says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions to overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. Nothing will harm you. It's time for you to stop walking in fear. It's time for you to walk according to the spirit and not according to the world, according to the flesh. Amen. God has something more for you. He has given you a delegated authority. And what does that mean? That means you have the authority to act as him. You have the authority to, to act as God on the earth. You are his ambassador. Yes, you are his ambassador. You know what an ambassador? An ambassador is a delegate from a kingdom. You are a delegate sent from the kingdom of God to this earth. And as an ambassador, even uh, in the natural, say an ambassador of the United States to the UK, they have everything paid for. They have everything taken care of. Their schooling is paid for. Their groceries are paid for. Their bills are paid for. So as an ambassador of the kingdom, God says to you, I am taking care of you. Everything is taken care of. You don't have to worry. He's got you. Uh, 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 he's got everything under control. Everything in your life is under the control of Jesus. Amen. A lot of times we see ourselves as our past. But guess what? You are not your past mistakes. You are not your past sin. You are not what you did yesterday. You're not. You are not. And so today, God wants you to, to change your mind. He wants you to begin to change the way that you see yourself. And he's going to begin to give you the, his eyes. Why? Because God looks at you through eyes of love, through the eyes of a father of love. Maybe you didn't have a father growing up, but God says, I am your father. And he loves you so much. And he wants you to see yourself with the eyes of love. When you look in the mirror, he wants you to see yourself the way that he sees you as a finished product. You're not, we're not perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Nobody on this earth is perfect, but we are, and we're all in our process. I'm in my process. Trust me. We're all in a process of becoming more like Christ. So today, God wants to change your mind. He wants to change the way that you think about yourself, the way that you view yourself. And the way that you see yourself. And he wants you to see yourself the way the word of God tells you to see yourself. The way that the word of God says you are who you are. Amen. And I want you to stand if you're at home or wherever you are. If you're driving, don't stand. <laughs> uh, if you're listening to this through, uh, you know, while you're driving. But I want you to say this prayer with me. I, we want to say a prayer of repentance. We want to repent before God for seeing ourselves through the eyes of the world. And not seeing ourselves through God. God's eyes. So I want you to lift up your hands in a sign of surrender and close your eyes so you're not distracted by your family or anybody else around you and say with me, Lord Jesus, today I repent. Forgive me for seeing myself through the eyes of the world instead of through your eyes. Forgive me, Jesus, for not walking in the fullness of what you have had for me. Lord, I repent, and today I make a decision to walk as an heir of the kingdom, to walk in delegated authority, to walk as a son or a daughter. 
Lord, I repent for being double-minded, for seeing myself Lord, it is one thing and then the other. Lord, I repent if I have been double-minded. I repent, Lord, if I have based my identity and who I am on my past, on my past mistakes, or the things that I have done. Lord, I repent, and today I see myself as your child. I see myself as a believer. I see myself, Lord as your uh, son and daughter. Lord, if I have not walked in holiness that you have called me to walk in, Lord, I repent. Say it with me. Say it with all your heart. Say, Lord, I repent for not separating myself or consecrating myself the way that I should have. I repent, Lord, for connecting myself to this world, for allowing myself to be a part of this world and to act the way the world has acted. Lord, I repent. Today, I remember mind myself that I am in the world, but I am not of it. Lord, I repent today if I have not walked in holiness, if I have not walked in purity, if I have not walked in purity in my relationships as a single person, as a single man or woman. Lord, I repent. I purify my heart, purify my mind. Create in me a clean heart today. Come and renew a right spirit within me today, Holy Spirit spirit. Lord, I ask that you will come and remind me, Lord, that you have bought me with a price. I was bought with the blood of Jesus. And as a result, I no longer belong to this world, but I belong to you. And Lord, today I stand in that place of sonship. I stand in that place and I know that I was not born of a man. I was not born of a woman, but I was born of God. And today you are my father. Today you are my father. Today you are my father. I don't, the atmosphere just changed and the love of God is being released right now. God's love is beginning to pour out over you where you are. Because he says, I am your father and I love you. You are my beloved. You are my beloved. Don't be ashamed to cry. Don't be ashamed to cry. It doesn't matter if you're a man and you were told crying is not for men. There's something that God wants to do in your heart. He wants to heal your heart today. Don't be afraid to cry. Let it out. There is some pain. I see that there's some of you that there's been so much pain in your heart from the lack of love you receive from your father your natural father, and God wants to pour his love in you today. He's pouring his love in you. He's pouring his love in you today. He's going to transform you. His love is going to transform you. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I declare over every son and daughter that is listening, that is watching, Lord, that your love would just inundate them. Let your love begin to saturate them. Fill the room, the home. Fill that place with where they're at. Fill it so that they can feel nothing but the love of God, the peace of God, the life of God. Lord, that they would know that they are loved, that they are, would know that they are yours. They don't belong to the devil. They don't belong to the world, but they belong to you. Father, I thank you for their lives. Lord, I thank you for a refreshing that you are bringing to them, a renewed identity. They're beginning to change. One of the, the, the last time I, I taught you or I was able to bring, I talked about renewing the mind. And God, I thank you that they are going to renew their minds in the way that they see themselves. Their mind is being renewed day by day so that they see themselves the way you see them. Father, I thank you for their lives. I bless them. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. And I declare that in this week, you will walk in the fullness of who you are in Christ like never before. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Again, I want to thank you so much for giving me the privilege and honor of bringing you this word today. I bless you, and I hope that it has touched you and that you received. And God bless you.